Hey everyone, it's Kirk here again at Option Alpha. So I wanted to jump back in again and take a look at the performance of the EV portfolio that we're testing out here as an experiment and see where we're at after 471 trades. So you can see this is the performance. And again, we'll just kind of piggyback this on the last video that we did kind of checking in, which I think was about 168, 170 trades. So since then, it's made a lot of trades, which has been the goal of what we've been doing, experimenting with this and running this paper trading portfolio now, just trying to get as much data as possible. So we'll check in here. We'll kind of see where the portfolio is, how it's kind of behaved and what it's done uh, in 471 trades. Before we jump to that, though, I just want to show you this graph from one of the recent research reports that we put out on the blog. I'll put a link in the uh, in the details of this video so you can get a copy of that and just go right to it. It's completely free. You can see this and all the other charts we put together. But this just shows essentially the performance of the average P&L for a trade versus the perfectly expected or theoretical expected value. So in this case, you can see this, this red line here that I'll kind of highlight in pink. This red dotted line, that's the theoretical perfect expected value. And so what that basically means is that if you have an expected value of a trade that is $20, well, then perfectly, if all the trades played out and we have lots of data points, then that particular trade and all the trades like it would have exactly a $20 PL. So if the EV or expected value is $20, how often or how far do we deviate from that perfect, perfect expected value? If I'm expecting $20, should I get $20 at the end of the day with lots and lots of trades? That work out over time. And again, this is just purely looking at expected value. And what you can see is that for different EV buckets that we kind of tracked in thousands and thousands of trades, is that it basically more or less like matches up with the perfectly executed line here. It does get a little bit more deviations when you start going further out on the spectrum of EV, which I think is a combination of one, just low sample size right now. So there's just not enough trades that are at 100 EV. That's a really lopsided trade, but you know, of those trades, let's say there's 390 trades that had 100 EV when they started, where did they basically end up? Well, they basically ended up perfect. I don't know if I would trust that going forward just because there's not a lot of data for that. So you can see that when you get out here on the further ends of further higher EV to start on a trade, and you combine that with a little bit low data points because we just don't have enough data for this yet, then you can start to see that it does start to deviate. But overall, you see that generally it follows this progression. And that's pretty comforting in the sense that with lots and lots of data, although it's not perfect because we're not analyzing every perfect environment in the markets, we generally see that it kind of correlates, you know, correlates around this expected value. So what you generally have for expected value is generally what you should get if you let the trades play out. So this has been pretty interesting, I think for us, because we've been kind of in this lower range here for our EV portfolio. It might be interesting future to test some higher EV minimums um, and kind of push the portfolio just a little bit that way. But that also means that maybe we start to introduce a little bit more volatility moving forward. So anyways, I thought that was good. If you do have a chance, check it out because it's really important. So with the pure EV portfolio right now, here's where we're at. Um, on positions. And I kind of looked at the last video just to kind of get a, a snapshot of where we were before versus where we are now. Again, this is all experimental right now. My personal goal is to start live bots that trade this. So I'm doing the, the process of testing, iterating, making changes to our positions moving forward, and then eventually start transitioning into live trading, which is what I hope to do if this all continues to work out. So right now we've done about 471 closed positions on this Again, pure EV portfolio, which is a lot of bots, combinations of ETFs and stocks. And the win rate has been about the same. It's about the same as what it was on the last video, a little over 70% win rate, which is basically what it should be because that's what we're targeting. We're mostly letting positions either capture max or very close to max profit or go all the way to expiration. Generally, it's been really good. We've seen a little bit of that downtick in the beginning, but it's generally had you know some positive momentum and upward trajectory. As far as profit factors and kind of portfolio metrics go, profit factor has been about the same, about the one for one, I think is what it was in the last video. So it's kind of come down a little bit, which should be natural. It should naturally maybe go a little bit lower. So if it starts higher and goes lower, that's okay. As long as it stays above one, that's really the key here. This is just kind of judging like total raw profits over total raw losses. What are we gener generating here? Sharp ratio is significantly higher right now. I think this one might come back down at some point. 
Um, so I think we're going through a little bit of a phase in this portfolio where it's taken out a lot of winning trades, which is great. But of course, that doesn't happen forever. And so you get some of this cyclicality and the sequencing risk that happens in portfolios where we've done a really good string of, of winning trades, maybe just capture the right side or the right positions in the right environment. So I think the sharp ratio is probably a little bit overstated right now. It might come back down. Same thing with Sortino ratio. Wins and losses. This one's always super interesting to me. So total wins that it's had is about 345. Total losses that it's had is about 125. Again, I've mentioned this on the last one too, but it bears repeating. Like I personally could not go through this myself. Like I couldn't go through this and like physically take manually trading 125 losses. Like, and especially in a short time period, it'd be detrimental, I'd like just to my own psychology as a trader, it probably would be to you too. I feel like in that case, and sometimes I've seen it take like 10, 20, 30 losses in a row, where it's it's gone through series where it's just like, hey, look, this week was just not a good week, or this series was not a good series, and it takes a lot of those losses. So, so I don't know if I could go through that. I'm, I'm much happier playing the overall math and numbers and letting the bots take care of that. Average PL has been about the same thing thing with the turn on risk. Average risk, I think, was a little bit higher. Entry probability profit's been about the same, so we're still targeting over 70% entry pop. Um, days in trade and days to expiration for the average trade. These have all been actually a little uh, about the same as the other ones. This is actually where I think I'm going to start to make slight adjustments to the portfolio. I'll do that here today too, but I'm going to start moving these out to maybe like the seven to 10 day range or a little bit pushing them out. Originally, if you remember from the first video where we kind of set this thing up, the goal in doing this was to get a lot of data early. And we did that on purpose by just focusing on shorter duration. So now that we've done everything and it originally was under five days as far as target positions, that goal, I, I think, has mostly been achieved in that we've got a lot of positions here, so we're starting to get a lot of data. I still want to get some more data before I feel totally comfortable with it. 400 trades is not nearly enough for me, but I do want to start pushing out that, that average entry day because uh, we've also done some additional research, which we'll publish here soon, that shows that around the 7 to 10 day you know, kind of time frame, that seems to be the most predictive of probability of profit versus actually getting that probability of profit. There's a little bit more variance in the under five days is a little bit more subjectivity where you just can't really predict what happens in five days or it's much harder. Uh, we've been lucky that all of our positions have been right around or at exactly where our probability profit has been predicting, but there's a lot more variance shorter than five days. So if we start going 10, seven, somewhere in that range, we get a lot more like, um, I guess you could say like an R value of that of that statistic where it's a little bit more tighter around the expected outcome of where it should be. So that's what I wanna do here today. I'm gonna to shift over to the bots and just kind of give you a rundown of these positions. Again, this is active positions uh, that the bot has right now. So you can see the day change right now is about $68. But you can see some of these have been pretty active, have gone through some pretty wild swings. CrowdStrike has had a pretty some pretty wild swings. Some were active and then stopped. Um, and just the pricing doesn't work out or the filters are not hit or there's not an expiration, that's okay. And I think that's kind of some of the cyclicality that we have to let this run through during this testing period. Um, but you can kind of see that they've been all over the place. Some have peaked early and have fizzled out. Some have had huge drawdowns and have come back. Um, it's just, there's really no consistency in this, which is okay, because they're trading a lot, a lot of things uh, moving forward. Oh, I forgot to, to go a little bit down on this. Everyone's gonna kill me on this video. So by strategy, this is what I thought was pretty interesting by strategy. So. By strategy, iron condors have far outperformed everything else. If you remember when we actually created this, this bot template and started running this, we have no particular strategy that we're letting the bots run through. So let me just jump in here to something like Apple. Again, they're all sharing the same automation. So at this point, it doesn't really matter which one we look at. But here you can see that I'm not telling you which strategy to choose. So I'm not saying be directionally bullish, be directionally bearish, be neutral. It's just literally take the best trade that we have based on the criteria that we set up. So in this case, I'm letting the bots and trade ideas choose which side it's on based on the, the metrics and the math of what trade works out best. It looks like it's taken a lot of iron condor trades compared to uh, short call spread trades. And actually, surprisingly, it hasn't taken a lot of short put spread trades. The short put spread trades have actually been the losers and the iron condors have far and away been the winners of, of this category. So that's pretty interesting. By symbol, we've actually seen some symbols start to really change. 
Um, originally, if you remember last time we looked at this, we saw a lot of stocks in the, the profitable category, and we still see a lot of stocks in the profitable category, but we are starting to see some of the regular tickers like SPY, XRT, FXI, EWZ, uh, EEM, XLE, um, or XLF, uh, QQQ, all start to come back up to the surface. So we're starting to see as you start to get more data, maybe some of those things are kind of coming back around. So this will still be interesting to watch. Uh, ones that have been really big downers on the portfolio, Tesla has been a huge drag on the portfolio. Um, IBM, IYR, XOP, all of those have had huge moves. NVIDIA has been one that's been all over the place. Um, so that's interesting. I think the last time maybe NVIDIA was one of the top ones and now it's one of the one of the lower ones. So we start to see a lot more um, you know, fluctuation in some of these. It's still not a lot of positions, like NVIDIA has 11 positions. So early on it had some good winners, then it had a big loser, then it had a couple small ones, another big loser, and it's just been kind of bouncing back. So still not nearly enough data for NVIDIA to say, hey, we're gonna kill this one versus other ones, but it is very interesting to see um, how this kind of shifts as we continue to do the testing here. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna go in here to the actual automation. Let me just kind of backtrack where I got to this. So inside of any bot right now for the Pure EV portfolio, they all share this same automation because they're all bots running different, uh, the same automation just with the only change or variable being the input, which is the ticker. So in here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go into my trade idea action. I'm gonna actually change the expiration. Remember I said, We've done some new research. We'll be publishing that soon here on the blog. But basically, it shows that you know under five days, it's a little bit more volatility around the predictiveness of the probability of profit, which makes sense because you just have a short compressed time period. You get out to like seven, ten days, you have a lot more predictive power. So what I want to do is I want to switch this up from expirations um, that are uh, under five days, and I'll go here and we'll do. Uh, something at least seven days, and we'll go out to maybe say 12 or 13 days. Let's go out to say like 13, 14 days. Uh, that gets us a good two week time period. I would predict that we would probably be in like the seven to 10 range as our average days to expiration moving forward. So I don't know how many times we'd get out to the 14, but but as long as it lands somewhere around the seven to 10 ish range, which is why I gave it a little bit more of a buffer on here. If you did exactly 10 days, just for the record, then it would just make sure it's seven to 10 days. So that's a three day window, every rolling cycle that you have expirations. And so I think it would just be hard to find, you know, a lot of trades in this case. We, we're trying to get a lot of trades in because we want the numbers and the math, you know, to have a lot of data behind it, a lot of, uh, a lot of occurrences. So I'm also gonna increase the slippage just a little bit. So since we're doing a little bit more testing here, um, I wanna increase the slippage on all positions here. Just give it a lot of slippage. Again, if it works out great, great. When we go live, we can reduce the slippage and try to get more mid price. But here, I wanna give it more slippage. So I wanna give it the ability to go a little bit further uh, down the spectrum here. So I wanna increase the slippage on all positions going in. And we're going a little bit further out. This means that the premium should be a little bit higher, which also means we can give it some more slippage and still not go negative on pricing. So everything else we're gonna keep exactly the same. We kept our EV per contract greater than zero. It's our only filter right now. Like I said, because of the chart that we looked at earlier, there is a possibility that we start going further up the up the uh, perfect EV curve, if you will, or, or line in the future where we start saying, hey, look, we gotta have $10, or we gotta have $15. I'm not quite at that point yet. I still wanna do a lot of testing around just pure EV. So just at least a dollar of EV on positions. Probability of profit, 70%, again, max loss less than $500 on a trade, that could be the top end, and then rank all ideas by alpha, which is basically gonna look at the risk adjustedness of each position. So that's what we're gonna do moving forward. We'll make these changes um, and put this one in. So now literally moving forward because I just made those changes, on all positions, they will now use that new criteria for finding positions moving forward. So as always, I hope you all really enjoy the series. I'll continue to document what I'm doing here, the changes I make um, as we get new information, new data on this. If you have any questions, let us know. I'll put all the links in the comments here below this video. And until next time, happy trading.